Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm back again, and this time I have the pleasure of being joined by two lovely ladies who I'm going to introduce in a second. Um, in this session, the topic is work management efficiency, uh, secrets for multiple projects and teams. So the goal here in this session is to really help you all um, learn some actionable strategies that you can take away, hopefully, and think about how you want to synchronize projects, standardize processes, um, and really implement those changes across your teams. And I'm excited to hear about some of the secrets that both Maggie and Teresa have to share with us today. So let's jump in. All righty, uh, quick introductions um, of who we've got here. Uh, Maggie is the Vice President of Program Management or PMO at Convene, where she supports the company's internal de departments with project prioritization and strategy. And she's led efforts at Convene to create efficient business processes and workflows, um, tying technology into that process. And prior to being the PMO lead, she led a team of production managers to help clients navigate the pre-production and day of event experience. And prior to coming, she spent almost a decade with uh, Apple as a people leader and trainer. So she's got a lot of experience working with teams and improving um, customer experience and technical proficiency. So we'll hear from Maggie in a bit. And then next is Teresa. Um, Teresa is an innovative award-winning professional with over a decade of project and program management experience um, in global tech firms. She is the PMO um, or leading a PMO team at VMware and creates innovative and streamlined productivity tools as well as processes that she rolls out to multiple teams and she'll be talking about that um, uh, as well. So for those that weren't in the earlier session with myself, um, I'm Angela Bunner. I'm the global solutions leader here at ClickUp. Um, I lead the solutions engineering center of excellence, as well as the ClickUp University enablement team. So if you've been out on ClickUp University or a workshop or a webinar, um, that's part of the creation of my team. And my passion is around driving productivity and educating folks on the art of the possible of ClickUp. Um, I love a challenge of having a business process or uh, um, workflow that you are doing manually and I guarantee we can figure out a way that we can automate it and get it um, streamlined and click up. So been in the project management space for over 20 years um, and I love talking with customers about how they're implementing change um, and improving productivity in the lives of everybody that uses the, the application. All righty, let's jump in. Uh, so before we get started, we wanted to do a poll um, with the audience so that we can kind of get a sense of where everyone's at. So let me launch the poll. Oh, there we go. Um, so if you click on the polls tab, you should see uh, the question. So when you're trying to scale rapidly, how should PMO processes adapt? Three options. They should remain strictly standardized. They should be highly agile to accommodate unique scenarios or a balanced approach with room for special snowflake scenarios. This has been a theme that we've heard in previous sessions as well is how should how adaptable should the PMO be or not? Um, because there's a balance of governance and process versus needing to be adaptable. And there's obviously pros and cons. Looks like we got a pretty high between the two. Being agile and adapting or a balanced kind of in the middle of the road with with some special scenarios. I talked about this in my earlier session with having like an engineer team where everyone's all agreeing that we should row the boat one way, but one team wants to do their own way. So I call them, they are the special snowflake. Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. Maggie, you want to talk about some of your experiences? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's kind of, um, I think Kelly in the chat just mentioned that two and three feel pretty similar. Um, and you're, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I'll talk a little bit about where um, we've, we at Convene have had to kind of be really hard and kind of black and white and then where that flexibility is, is necessary. So, um, you know, Teresa and I both, I'm, I'm speaking for both of us, the stuff that's on the slides certainly is not going to be groundbreaking. I think that you're going to see um, probably, you know, I was in a couple of the other sessions and I heard some of the same sayings. Um, and so really, I'm hoping we can get into good dialogue, Q&A, talk through specific examples. Um, the slides are really just meant to kind of 
guide me from, uh, guide me through being able to talk through, you know, what we've done with ClickUp and and taking kind of a mature startup business and, and really moved it into building out um, a full strategy with a very lean team. Uh, and so a couple things about Convene. Uh, Convene is a global hospitality company that designs and operates spaces to meet, um, have events, and then we also have flexible office space. I can I, I don't want to say guarantee, but I'd imagine that out of the attendees here, you've probably been to an event at a convene. Um, we have locations in New York, Boston, Philly, DC, San Francisco, which we just opened last week, very exciting, as well as London and Chicago. So um, very much a uh, kind of all-in-one um, hospitality company, which is interesting because I think in most cases, me, I, I joined six years ago um, through an acquisition from a, an actual tech startup. So I was very much on the um, kind of customer success, uh, customer implementation side of things. Um, we really figured out that during COVID was when we had to start thinking about um, documenting not just SOPs for, you know, how to produce the event, but actually who does what and when. Um, we struggled very much with uh, um, all of our properties kind of operated uh, differently, but they were very successful and profitable. Um, so it's kind of if it was bro not broken, don't fix it mentality. With COVID, um, our building from the ground up and utilizing ClickUp was really the need to um, centralize our team. Um, that was, you know, we had to run lean, we had to do more with less. And so we implemented ClickUp in um, late 2020, early 2021, um, with a three month implementation that we did ourselves. Um, so certainly, I think uh, one of the other presenters from an earlier session, being gritty or having to, to kind of roll up your sleeves and everyone sweeping the floor was certainly something, um, those were some uh, catchphrases that we used a lot during our uh, implementation. So I think um, previously, we, like I said, we did everything at the centralized level. So getting key stakeholders aligned to implement any part of a centralized uh, process, I think, was the biggest thing for us. Another thing that we really learned, which I think you can um, translate to any company who's trying to figure out how to make things more efficient, um, we if you asked who does what and when, we couldn't answer it because everything was so muscle memory. Um, so process mapping and really using ClickUp's mind map tool while we were building it helped us uh, you know, set up templates and get everything so that it's very clear what levels of expectation of you do this then, here's a task for it. Um, I think someone said in an earlier session, if it's not in ClickUp, it doesn't exist. Um, that's very much uh, how we operated when moving very, very decentralized teams into a centralized planning tool. Um, we essentially treat every event that we produce like a small project. Um, so there is a formal kickoff, there's formal planning, um, there's anywhere from six to eight people involved, sometimes more, sometimes less, um, depending on the size of the event. Um, it's very funny to be a presenter in uh, virtual events like this because I'm usually on the team making sure they run smoothly. So um, really COVID is where PMO as a strategy, I think was launched. Um, we kicked everything off with, uh, we actually called them SWAT, SWAT teams um, because it felt very much like how do we survive, uh, especially in the events and hospitality industry during that time. So that's, that's really where the methodology of PMO and kind of top-down messaging came through and where we really started to tie everything we do back to priorities, which I've heard a ton uh, which is great content uh, today. And then I think that constant improvement process for us was a huge part of implementing the system, but also telling people that like, we're going to have to change this. This isn't going to work like immediately the way it is. So, um, you know, doing live edits of the template, uh, making sure the dashboards for specific users, um, you know, really like live editing became a huge way to get people bought into the tool. Um, and so, you know, we really tackled that uh, during COVID. And then I think now we've um, expanded what we did with production and actually planning our events. And that whole methodology is, is why we're using ClickUp across different departments. So, um, you know, I'll kick over to how we actually take kind of for us rapid growth. I think ClickUp has the same mindset. I've spoken with a number of people um, over the you know two three years of engagement and it's the same kind of idea you have to prioritize based on company goals business risk um a couple things we've done from a 
growth and rapid growth is keeping things pretty nimble. Um, certainly heard solving for the 80%. I think the big the big thing here was being flexible. Um, for us, you know, maximizing efficiency during the administrative part of event planning was a huge part of, of using ClickUp and implementing it and forcing everyone into a centralized place. Um, and so, you know, when we think about specific examples um, of doing this, uh, I think you're going to hear me say process mapping over and over again, because it really does force teams to, to look at roles and responsibilities across any department, um, strategic planning, down to a very granular process of like who puts out the coffee and tea, right? So we, we've we gone super granular up to, you know, how are we going to be profitable in 2024? So, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things of, of of being okay, you know, when when to decree certain things, I had that on the earlier slide. Um, analysis paralysis is another phrase that I think a lot of people get. And when we were implementing um, ClickUp and also just understanding, you know, how do we decree certain things at the central level versus keeping our properties having the autonomy that they need to deliver an amazing experience? Um, that actually had to be documented pretty pretty. Um, aggressively. And so a huge part of, I think, if there's a takeaway is like, when is the steering committee decreeing something? And then when is it really, okay, let's talk about it. Let's do a working session. Let's understand, especially mm -hmm. in a fast paced environment. For us, what slowed us down the most is when we knew we needed to make a decision, but we weren't sure who was supposed to make the decision. Um, mm -hmm. And so really defining kind of task owners and things like that. Um, ClickUp made it so that your name was attached to it. So you had to do the work um, and that that certainly uh, aided in our rapid expansion. And so, um, you know, I think tying it all back, I'm more excited about getting into probably Q&A and, and talking through how we did it. But I, the biggest things that we still work on and 1% and better is another is convene also has a catchphrase. So I think it's interesting, um, very much synergies between both companies, which is also why getting people on board with ClickUp is pretty easy because I think it's like that shiny new, I want to get on there. So we've had a lot of departments look at the work that we did with some of our more mature processes and, and onboard them into using ClickUp as a tool, not just for project management, but really for you know change management. And I think that's establishing what the guidelines are, even if they're lean, right? Because we're moving so quickly, um, getting the right players involved, and then just being transparent with uh, the team. I think during COVID, this methodology really worked for us. And so we haven't stopped doing that. And that's really helped people realize, yes, it's another system. Yes, there's more process. There's more templatization. But it's so that there, the level of effort that you can do in your job is you don't have to think about certain things. And that's the whole point, I think, of um, you know being able to build a culture of efficiency through transparency normalizing change, things like that. Um, and so, you know, takeaways for me, and I think Teresa will probably be able to take the baton and, and look at how you do that in such a, a, a more mature organization. For us, it sounds really simple, but it's it's uh, getting alignment at the top. We are such a, we're, you know, top line revenue driven. So everything has to kind of tie back to what is what's how's the how's the company going to benefit but also um is this the same strategy that we had three months ago maybe not right so i think getting sure that the alignment is current and and updated is is certain certainly the biggest uh takeaway that i can have and then um you know company roadmap whatever you want to call it getting a list of priorities even if they just start out as a list um, and checking them twice, as I like to say it, checking them often. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure people can relate here. Sometimes what um, sounds amazing on a Friday night and something that we're going to implement on Monday no longer has legs, right? And so being able to, uh, you know, understand what has legs, we have a, a certain we have a joke internally with certain employees that we have to make sure they say it three or four different times to know that it's actually an initiative they want to kind of go through um mm -hmm. so there's certain little nuances you also learn by just working closely with those stakeholders um and then i think the the, the transparency for me i'd put this in a, on a slide by itself if we could is understanding what messaging and what information to share when and to who 
Um, what I love about this and what I love about using ClickUp is you can easily change your views, right? You can easily change what you're delivering to the client or delivering to the internal customer, whoever it is. Um, and so being transparent at the most appropriate time for me was, was a huge part of our success. And I think um, continued success, just building out the methodology is less about, I'm just one person, right? A VP of PMO sounds like a very, very fancy title with a very fancy team, but it's actually just a person of one. And the reason for that is because so much of what PMO is really delivering to the group is um, strategy, right? Templatization, methodologies, understanding, follow this and you'll be efficient. Um, and if it doesn't work, let's talk through it. And so um, I, from there, I'll probably pause because I think it's a great place for, for this or, or audience to hear a little bit more tangible, tangible things in the larger organization and how you take that and really deploy it, um, you know, at a more global level. So I'll kick it back to Angela. I think we either are doing a poll or we might want to do some Q and A, but I'll pause there. Yeah, I love it. So many, so many, so many tangible things that even you talked about. Um, I love how you're doing mind mapping and process, uh, you know, discussions and creative um, brainstorming with the team. I think the transparency theme is really key. And I've seen that over the last three years with COVID, just working in the space for so long, people are much more open to being transparent and having their work in a single yeah. platform. Yeah. When I was at a prior company, you know, years ago, and we talked about open all the work in one place and just anybody can go out and find projects. There's a lot of pushback in the space. Um, PMOs and co companies coming from more legacy tools or they kind of like their silos in some regard because it's like you know i'm managing my work let me manage it i'll just let you know what you need to know but when you when you, we transition to COVID, i've seen the the remote work and the culture change and i think people realize you're more productive when you have access to finding answers yourself you know ask use you search and find the answer if it's out there um you know you can be more productive in answering your question um, and I think it, it fosters that collaboration as well, like you said, um, doing mind maps, reviewing the uh, priorities. I have to also comment on the roadmap because I think having the single roadmap is so key. I've been guilty myself on a Friday night where I'm catching up and I'm like, <laughs> we need to do this and this and this. And then on Monday morning, we look at it and it, it by default, it's categorized in the other projects category. And it's always helpful to go back and see well, these are our OKRs for the, the company and for our team or department. Do they fit in? And if we do, we got to move something around. If not, then I leave it in the other project section or grouping on my list so that we can, you know, look at it next quarter. Um, yeah. And I think having that, you know, everybody on the same place makes such a big difference. So yeah. it's um, also really helped. Uh, just one comment too. We, we did another acquisition with a UK based company. Um, and one of the things we're learning, you know, outside of just like cultural, you know, understanding how to to, to become and feel like one uh, company is sometimes our definition is completely different, right? So we might say a certain word or or a process and regionally it's, it's just a different experience. So putting it down on paper, kind of for, almost forcing that like kindergarten style, like read from the, you know, read from the, um, the chalkboard that really right. helps determine if, you know, an operations leader in the UK is going to explain, understand, you know, a certain process than someone would in DC. And so I, I couldn't, I can't recommend that enough is like almost putting it on paper makes it real. Right. And so you can easily talk about concepts, but if you, if you then say, okay, what happens now? What, you know, how do you pass the baton? When does that happen? Does that happen every time? And it kind of forces that function of saying, well, wow, we're really building, I think we're building the process too much for the 20% of outliers. We need to build it right. for the 80%. And so that's also been another comment of just like, it sounds so simple, but sometimes forcing everyone to read the same task or read the same box and say, does everyone agree? That's actually what our priority or that's the function. So, um, yeah. you know. Totally agree. Totally agree. We have all of our SOPs in ClickUp and Docs. So yeah. Um, and let's do another poll before we transition to Teresa, uh, kind of related to this topic. Uh, how are PMO processes or how should they be updated to maintain relevance as the business is evolving? With every major shift at a fixed schedule or constantly? 
kind of what I guess the sentiment would be based on the feedback and the things we've heard from other chat this uh, sessions as well. Agile world constantly with changes. All right, Teresa, how are you managing changes out there? I know that VMware is always changing. Yes, very much so. Um, so as I kind of talk through things, I'll let you know that yes, VMware is a much bigger organization than Convene, but I am, you know, one cog and part of a huge machine. Um, and so it's really been um, the opportunity for us um, recently, you know, always you have your top objectives, those kind of things, right? But more recently, we've had specifically like three to five true top priorities at kind of the overarching level. Um, so what we've been able to do is kind of um, look at everything through that lens. And so we kind of start with the why. I know it's very cliche, but it's oh so real and something that we always try to do now um, more than we used to. Oftentimes, sometimes a project would happen because someone knew the right person to ask and the right way to ask about it. Um, and that, you know, that's okay. That's kind of how things happen sometimes. So we wanted to find a way that we could really have intakes and things coming in and make sure that they were aligned in our outcomes with those top three. So some of the great things that we've been able to do with the ClickUp tool is to actually have a central intake now. And that central intake actually ties back to those top three objectives, also the business unit, the audience that's going to be consuming some of the content, specifically the PMO that I work inside of is the learning arm of um, VMware's organization. So we're looking at, you know, how we can get longevity out of this and how we can get things turned around quickly that really aligns back up to those objectives. And so with doing that, we're kind of tagging a score to it. Um, and then we can really look at something based on some numbers, um, not just because someone knew the right person to reach out to. And then with that, we've been able to actually just have some great conversations to kind of find out um, what other parts of the organization are doing, because we've been very siloed, of course, in the past. And so once we were able to kind of get that sort of blanket intake together, get that working with a few different groups, we've been able to really scale that up and take that to where, you know, rather than coming in just as one request for one team, it's coming in one request that trickles into multiple teams. So we're using that really collaborative aspect now um, that ClickUp is able to give us. And then with that, back to very similar to what Maggie had said, it's all about visibility. Um, so we're able to use the dashboards and we're able to use um, what we call as well a roadmap, which essentially is a list of everything that's happening. So we can see things that are in pipeline that are going to be coming. Um, along with what's in development. And then we also, because we develop a lot of true content pieces, we actually take that um, one step further and we like have a long legacy of it, of the actual assets and things that we create are all listed out. So anytime someone can go back and reference, you know, the nitty gritty details and where to look to for um, individual information. And so once we've done that, we've kind of been able to optimize, look back at the outcomes. And as you guys all do all the time um, when you're working in project and process management, just kind of keep going through that cycle um, tends to be pretty standard for us. Quick question that came up in the chat, you know, other than executive ownership, what do you all think people often get wrong about managing work effectively in teams? Um, I think honestly, sometimes, and I can say this as a project manager, um, I think sometimes people are interested more about, oh, well, this is my plan. I've got to stick to exactly what my plan is, which I think is great. You need to do that. But I take the approach that the people that are actually doing the work, they are experts. It's their zone of genius. They know how long it's going to take them. They know when a roadblock is coming or something that's going to kind of maybe cause a few issues. So we really try to tie in the individuals that are working on the projects way more um, than I think probably when I started first in my career, I realized that you should do. Yeah, it's building the relationship, making sure that they understand the common goal that you're, you're working towards. Yeah. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. And that kind of, you know, the next piece you were wanting to talk about was kind of change management. Um, and I think it's the same, whether it's, say, an enterprise level, it's your individual team or department. You know, it's about preparing. It's explaining those changes, like particularly for us. 
Um, VMware has been a great company that you can use any tool that you need that helps you take care of what you need. But that also meant that, again, we were in silos and it was really hard to see what was happening across um, the organization. So when we're able to explain that a little bit more to individuals, um, then get their buy-in because they're actually helping us to build this, um, that was really critical and key that we're also kind of developing those realistic plans, you know, all the stuff that you always see, you know, set your goals, form your teams, um, determine what the scope is going to be. But, you know, the key piece in the implementation, I think, here for us was really empowering our team members. And with that specifically, you know, we did a lot of user acceptance testing. We gave them the why, what we wanted. Um, we built out some frameworks and we really iterated on it. We we're like, hey, let's try this. Let's gather. Let's have like three key people of the different groups come in. Let's test it out. Let's kind of work through it. Um, and that really helped um, so that we could build out something that we knew the people that were going to be using it would actually use. So that's been a really key thing. And then just celebrating those wins along the way as people did that. And then we found out that the people that are part of those early user acceptance testing, um, they actually became champions and kind of cheerleaders and coaches for those others that were using the tool as well along the way and helped us kind of to remove some of those roadblocks. Yeah, I love that. I love celebrating the wins, um, calling out the successes. Have, did you ever have a situation where you had an executive who was a, a roadblock? Someone asked in the chat. Um, probably. Um, for this particular implementation of ClickUp, we didn't. And one of the main reasons is because we had been searching for quite some time for tools actually in siloed groups, like the group I was even working with. We were starting to do our own search. And to the power of just connecting and talking to people, um, I was able to get on a certain Slack chat and ask a question that got me connected to someone in our unified communications team that was like, oh, yeah, I can help you with this tool you're asking about. But we're actually going through this enterprise level discussion. And if I hadn't have made that connection, they would not have even really thought about the team that I work with and how we needed to be a part of that. Um, but because it was at that enterprise level, we definitely um, felt like we got the support we needed and not really too much um, pushback from execs because they all wanted to be able to see across the board, you know, yeah. things at a moment's notice. Yeah, totally. And actually, that's a good segue in the next topic, which is around how do you maintain relevance and, and process in the, the technology over time as it evolves? Yeah, um, definitely. And this one's going to be pretty simple, too. I mean, my strategy and the group that we work with, we're all about keeping things as simple as possible um, because there's so much noise out there um, when you're trying to work through things as an individual and as a part of a team. So it's, you know, having those conversations, doing the celebrations, the things we talked about and having resources too for the team. Like we have been so lucky with our partnership with ClickUp as well that we've had, you know, an account manager assigned to us. We've had office hours on a weekly, sometimes I think twice weekly that someone can jump in, ask a question, you know, down to the really specifics of implementing workflows and um, different automations that are fairly technical. And then also for people that are just daily users um, collaborating in the tools, working on their task level. So it's been super helpful um, to have that as a resource for us. And then those resources as well as like the templates, the processes, all the things that you'd use in a project, you know, we're able to tag those inside of ClickUp. Um, we can create a template with, you know, one click literally, which is so fantastic. Um, and then have that kind of pinned at the top, shall we say, mm -hmm. so that someone can look back um, at any time and find something very quickly without having to search. Um, and then I'll circle back to that poll question. And I was not surprised at exactly where I was at too. We're like, I think 60 or 70% we landed on said that you should kind of be making, I think, continuous changes. Um, mm -hmm. And that's definitely kind of how we approach all of our things. We have a really good solid framework, we think. And then we meet a challenge. And rather than waiting to the very end of a project, which could be a month, could be 10 months, um, we evaluate what can we tweak right now? 
all right, let's implement it, let's iterate it, let's actually put that in our list. Um, and then we quarterly go back and kind of really truly look through things because we don't want to be bombarding people every week with, a, oh, we're changing this, this and the other. Um, but we do want to give them the tools and the things to pivot really quickly um, when something comes up. And so that's been really valuable for us um, as a larger organization. That's awesome. How do you, um, two, two questions, how do you, how are you celebrating the wins? Um, and then how do you communicate those types of changes when you're due to pivot and change process? Yeah, um, so for celebrating, we um, are almost everyone in the organization I'm with is remote, and we have been for the very longest time, um, years and years. Um, so we're very used to kind of that remote culture. So we'll literally at the end of kind of when a project wraps, we'll kind of like have a little mini party celebration, just get together without the stress of the meeting being about the meeting about what we're talking about, um, and just kind of tell some war stories and celebrate those that really shined. Um, particularly, we've got a lot of people, like most organizations, people behind the scenes that are completely amazing and do so much work, but they don't often get celebrated in a public setting. So we do that. And then, of course, we'll send out, say, email communication um, on, hey, here's what launched, here's the impact it made, and here's the people that participated in that um, so that individuals can kind of see their name out there as well. And and are you pulling some of the metrics from like a dashboard and click up to support some of the celebrations? Exactly. Yeah, because we've got everything in there from start to finish. We have the metrics, we have the numbers, and we can look at it and kind of showcase what's happened. So that's really helpful for sure. Right. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, that is the value of having everything in click up. Uh, <laughs> you know, thinking about performance reviews, I think probably a lot of organizations are doing that end of year. Um, it's always nice to be able to just run a report and like, these are all the tasks and projects you did that you're associated yeah. with. Completely. Yeah, that was one of the big sellers to actually people as individuals using the tool, because, you know, at the end of um, maybe a year, they were doing their performance review themselves. And they were trying to pull all their goals together. And I'm like, look, I can give you this list right here and you can just take and copy from that. And they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So super helpful yeah. for them. Exactly. And then I think your other question was on communicating things out when we make the changes. Mm -hmm. um, we will send out a formal email. We're still an email heavy company. We still are a PowerPoint heavy company, even though a lot of that has gone down, I think, with having like a live tool such as ClickUp. But we'll use a formal email communication. But we are heavy into using Slack as the tool that we use right now, sort of as our um, messenger. Um, so we have the right people in that. People can mute it if they're not interested. But, you know, whenever there's something major that's happening or even just a little tiny tweak, um, we'll put that in front of people um, so that they can see what's happening and know, you know, what that impact might be to them and how they can use the new processes or the new templates or things we put forward. Awesome. All right. Well, you have your, uh, final takeaways? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'll be quick because I think we're running out of time on this session. There's a lot of goodness today happening. Um, but at the core, simplify. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're a super large organization, a small cog in that organization or a smaller startup even. Um, just to simplify things as much as you can, kind of align with those three priorities. We were really careful and focusing inside of our dashboards because there is so much you can do with the dashboards and click up. We came up with like a consistent four, five, six things that regardless of where you're at in the organization, things that needed to be aware of. Um, and so we really focused on that when building out our dashboards. And then I would just say automate as much as possible to, you know, make those movements and things happen quickly um, and make it easy for your team to know what's happening and why it's happening. And then, you know, connecting, um, which has been mentioned so many times in this session and others is to really kind of communicate real time with those roadmaps. And then you can really customize them to the audience because whether you're a senior leadership person or whether you're someone on the ground actually getting the work done, what you're going to want to see a little bit different. different. Yeah, totally agree. I think uh, those are all great tips uh, and things that we people can do. Um, automating is my lifesaver. <laughs> that way I know what it is that I need to know and be alerted on because there's no way I can possibly follow all the different pro projects and tasks out there. So alert mm -hmm. me when something is at risk or overdue or, you know, of importance that I need. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Any final Any thoughts, Mary? 
I don't think so. I was just, I was monitoring the chat and there's so many good questions. Hopefully we can gather them and answer uh, them. After. Um, but yeah, no, I think the last comment in the 39 seconds we have is that uh, change is going to constantly happen. We should make it predictable. So um, that's, that's one of my big, big things to, to, to take away with. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Thank you all so much. Um